Hi, are we advertising? Right, well, are we too? Sorry. All right, everybody, welcome to the live stream. We just got started. Of course, we saw Tesla drop their production and delivery numbers earlier, and it's not good, but let's examine what happened here. So Tesla dropped this earlier today, 386,000 deliveries to 433 production in Q1. This is an 8.6% reduction from year over year. Uh, now, I just should mention that BYD fell by 40% from Q their Q4 numbers. They had an even bigger drop. They only sold 300,000 BEVs in Q1. Uh, so let's uh, listen to Jeff and Alexandra and have them tell us what they think has happened. Let's start with you, Jeff. Yeah, I think I should start off by saying, uh, number one, I'm a long investor in the company. I think it's important just to d declare that. Uh, I'm not I'm not over rotating on any one particular number um, here or there, but let's get right into it. Um, so I, I, I'm looking at the numbers. It's a miss. And, 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 and we don't know actually what happened. A couple of things were called out uh, by the company and you have to take those things on face value. And I think what I can do in terms of adding some value to this is try to uh, help explain and understand what could be happening from a supply perspective. Because when you have supply disruptions, intra quarter so a problem that starts inside of a quarter um you only have you basically only have 75 production days within the quarter uh to move product depending on which region you're going to and tesla stages their production in a manner to hit various points of distribution at certain points in time so the supply has to be timed not only does it have to be there uh in quantity but it's got to be timed right Otherwise, some of those opportunities do get missed. Now, again, I'm not trying to sugarcoat anything. You know, when you look at the, when I break down these individual issues, you know, they could be uh, external forces and they could be related to Tesla's uh, execution. We don't know. We don't know the root cause yet. But when I look at the Model Three changeover, the numbers I don't know and I'm not sure of yet uh, is normally in, in the U S they do about 50, 55,000 model threes in the quarter. Uh, and we, we don't know what they actually shipped, especially of the new refresh version. If you, you know, they could have had inventory units of the older version that could be in some of the units, but when people know that there's a new version, they're going to be waiting for the new version. So, um, they announced a vehicle the second week of January. I remember it was on a Tuesday night, weird time. And uh, so it was announced, uh, you know, call it 10 weeks with 10 weeks to go in the quarter. And that means there's about eight weeks or so to get product built and shipped, depending on where the people are. And they had a supply issue. So you have a quarter that's 12 or 13 weeks in length, depending on the quarter. They announced it the second week. That I, think, I don't think the first units were delivered until the fourth or fifth week of the quarter. And then they had they have a supply disrupt they have a supply issue. We don't know the actual root cause. We don't know if it's a particular component. I did look and I did notice that the rear wheel drive version was immediately available for um, for purchase, but the long range drive version you'd had you'd have to wait multiple months. So I don't know if there was a battery constraint or so forth. But if you start thinking about fifty five thousand units in the U.S., we don't know what number they did. They called it out as an issue. Did they do five k? 10k i don't know what the number they did of the model 3 but if you just subtract that from their normal run rate and also think like this is a new product they probably would have done they probably had it planned or pegged you know when you, when you do a new product introduction you normally run at 10 20 percent even hotter uh than normal so i could imagine that they plan production and plan supply for a, a, a much larger number on the model 3 and when they had this disruption not only did they lose their normal run rate of the 55k minus whatever they shipped, they may have lost some more. Again, planning for you know a bigger launch and a bigger number. So that's I think that could be a, a big chunk of the issue. Now you could say, well, they shipped you know 400 and I guess 84 or something in Q4. You know you know taking 40 or 50k out that would take it down to 434. You know, it's 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 part of that bring down from Q4. Well, there's definitely seasonality coming from Q4 to Q1. We saw uh, BYD, they're down 42 or 43% in units uh, sequentially from Q4 to Q1. So there's definitely seasonality. There's definitely something going on there. But that's, that's the Model 3 US. And then the one that's really up for debate 
is the the Berlin, um, uh, both the the arson, the fire, as well as the the Red Sea conflict, and and I've experienced dealing with um, conflicts where you've got pro, you've got inbound supply, and you've got a timing issue interquarter. Uh, again, when this when this impacts you, it looks like there was a, a there was about a anywhere depending on the the ship routes, a ten to fourteen day offset in terms of how many nautical miles and the time required to reroute supply. So that offset just goes into your quarter. You were depending on product coming in in a continuous fashion, and now you have to put that offset in. So the question is, is could you make it up elsewhere? That's up for debate. Could they have made up more out of Shanghai? It's possible. Um, but you definitely have that, that inserted time offset. And what happens is, is once you insert the offset, and once supply resumes, remember, you have 75 days in the quarter. You essentially have 10 weeks of production. So you, you do lose time. So the question is, is what number do you put that on? And then you have the arson. So the fire occurred. It was down for a few days. And, um, and it was in the beginning of March, I believe. And when you have a the – Mar- the, the third month of a quarter is very tricky even though Tesla's really reduced the delivery wave, there's still a large percentage of volume that happens in that quarter. Mm-hmm. And if you're down for a period of time in, let's say, the first part of March, and then you come up in the, the, the middle part of March, let's say, you, you honestly are going to be hit or miss if you're going to hit your points of distribution for final delivery where you can take credit in the quarter. So with the Model 3 and with this intra-quarter disruption, with the Red Sea and with the Berlin issues, I could see this phenomenon of number one, you are going to miss units, but you're also going to strand inventory because you have a run rate. You want to run your factory at high utilization. You want your suppliers running at high utilization. So what you do as a comp- first off, Tesla has anemically low inventory. Anemic- they left Q4 with 15 days of inventory. Now they're going to add some here, but it's still extremely low inventory. So what's going to happen in the situation is people are like, oh, well, they added 45, you know, some thousand units of inventory. So they must not have, it must not be a supply issue. No, it's the wrong inventory at the wrong place at the wrong time for the issues I just explained. Um, and when you have that, you, you, you take the hit, you strand it because you know you're going to be shipping that in the following quarter. And so when you're a growing or pretty steady volume business, you know, you would just continue to build and you would take the inventory hit. You wouldn't just shut off. You wouldn't tell your suppliers to shut off. Uh, and then finally, China, and I'll come up for air here. Uh, I, I mean, I put it on 10 to 20K. It could be a much larger number in terms of China macro. This is a, you know, a macro slowdown in terms of units. Some vendors in China were growing. Some were, were way down year, a quarter on quarter and year on year. Tesla was pretty close. I think only down uh, a few percent. Um, you know, literally like one or two percent, I think, year on year. We got to look at the the final numbers, but China macro is definitely uh, is definitely a factor. But that one, I mean, I'm not sure you just add it into the number yet because you know, as an OEM, you got to figure this out. So I think what I would close with is when I look what Tesla was doing from a pricing perspective, it didn't look like there was. I mean, there were raising prices, quite frankly, in the latter half of the quarter. So I didn't see any desperate action. They were using their tools with supercharging uh, credits and, and referrals and so forth, which are things that they can control at high gross margins. So th- to me, it didn't look like they were panicking. To me, it looks like they were acting like a company that has the demand that they want. You know, Maybe it's not as high as they want from a year ago or two years ago, but it doesn't look like a company, though, that needs to desperately you know, do any discounting um, you know, at this point in time, it looks like they're dealing with supply disruptions and they know once their supply disruptions clear up, they know they've got a, a good order book on the model three. They know they have a good order book and we didn't talk about the cyber truck and, you know, and, it, and, and it looks like we haven't talked, we will, maybe we'll talk about later in the call, just the impact of full self-driving and what that will do in terms of unit volume going forward. So I'll, I'll come up for air there. Okay. Thank you so much, Jeff. I'm going to have Alexander here before she needs to leave. What's your thoughts, Alexandra? Yeah, I, I just wanted to make a, a short a, a short appearance and reassure everybody because um, 
uh, I mean, in my view, of course, don't know, you know how I am a long investor and actually planning to purchase more about 200 to 250 stock today or in the next coming days, next two, three days. Um, and, and my, my thought is actually that I rather use this dip because I don't think earnings are going to be that bad. So, but wait, let's wait for that. Let's wait for that on the on the twenty third. It's this time on a Tuesday. It's actually full moon that day, so we'll see what uh, what happens there. Uh, Jeff made a great summary of what uh, what just happened. Is it great? No, it's not. There's no point. It really doesn't. Um, these cars are all going to be sold. It's not as if these 46,000 cars are, you know, unsellable or whatever. Most of them will probably already be on their path to delivery. And um, the other thing that I noticed last week, remember, there was no email pushing for a quarter end push by Elon. We had at the beginning of the month some of those financial in incentives and the announcement that on 1st of April prices will go up, but that was it. So you really didn't have this feeling that there was a huge push going on for this quarter end compared to other to other quarter ends. So given all that, I'm, you know, is it a good day? Well, it's a good day for me because I'm waiting to buy. But is it a good day in terms of uh, of delivery numbers? No, it's not. But does it matter? It just doesn't. I think what we're seeing today on, on FSD progress and on the excitement of people who have been using FSD and have, you know, noticed the clear difference between prior versions and the current version and what is going to happen now. Um, it, this is, this is a blip. I was, I was publishing about a week ago, an article from 2006 where analysts were going on and on and on about uh, bad um, iPod sales from Apple before 2007, right? I feel this is the same the same situation. We have these people counting VIN numbers. We have these people um, trying to predict um, those as possible delivery numbers. Um, then they get a headache and push it up or push it down and comment and comment. It doesn't matter. If you are in a Tesla for car sales, you probably better get out. Because that is not how it's going to work. So, and, and if you don't understand that, that just means you didn't do your homework. I mean, not that we all don't try help you do it, but it's um, it's just not a company where you should base it on quarterly car sales. If that is your your matrix, probably better out of it. The last point I wanted to love, Ross, I'm going to call him out in person this morning, crying for a change in the board of directors. I mean, the first thing is why the board of directors and why not the management if really wants to go there. But this is just absolutely ridiculous. The guy is still butthurt and, uh, and still didn't get over how he got slammed by Tesla and by um, all the Tesla shareholders. Clearly didn't want any of his um, thinking close to, close to the company company. And now, uh, more than a year later, he still has the need to pull out that old story and his old his old grunches uh, at any bad moment. Let him go on Yahoo Finance. Let him go on CNBC. <laughs> uh, he's going to cry for a day or two and then let it be. Okay. Yeah, just I would add, Herbert. you know, the, 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 the people that that count cars. I, again, I, when I get asked about this, we're like, what's your number for the quarter? I'm like, I don't count cars. I look at the data from people that do it and I commend them for trying. I mean, I think they're trying to do it, but from being on the inside of a company that produced consumer devices for, for, for people, I, I just know that there's no, honestly, there's no way to understand um, what's going on the inside of that company, the actual shipments, the tracking, there are things you can do macroscopically uh, on a macro level with drones and things like that. And there's things you can track ships. You, there's things you can do. But when, when Tesla's at the rate of production that they're at, there's, it's, it's going to be very difficult um, to really honestly do this accurately. And, uh, and especially when you're getting into things like revenue recognition, and then the other thing is going to be very difficult is inventory. There's just, there, honestly, there's just no way. So when I see all these trackers, I see all these things, there's relative, there's relative feedback you can get from these things and, and, and try to understand. But just to think that you know, you absolutely know the inventory or you absolutely know the volume shipping, like these people were way off. And I think everybody should go in and take the time to do, you know, an analysis of like why were, you know, they way off and then try to understand what to correct for the future. 
but I, I see people coming on X now and they're saying, well, I was the closest. I'm like, you're that far off. You, you have a fundamental process problem. You should probably go and correct. And I wouldn't be espousing that like we know these, these, know these things with absolute certainty because I think there's other things that are going to be highly disruptive in terms of how Tesla manufactures and distributes product. And I think this is going to be a very, and I've said this for actually years, it's going to be a very difficult thing to do, um, especially as production grows. So I think that those people need to do, honestly, do real corrective action work because a lot of people were, were using this information, looking at this information um, you know, to make, to make decisions. So anyway, there, there's definitely you, work Jeff. to be done there. Yeah. I know Which both of ridiculous. you don't say that you can, exactly. you can predict the stock price, but can you guys tell me what you think is going to happen? So the stock has fallen significantly today. It fell by, I think now by 6%. Do you think that this is a 6%? I actually don't think up? that's enough. No, 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 no. I actually, you know, I saw <laughs> I know, the numbers. I thought, it. okay, great, great. It. This is going to be yeah. good. I, I, I'm going to be in the 150s, right? And I'm not. I think this actually holds up quite well. And uh, and I mean, I, I want to greet all our Tesla Q people in the comments. I love how they're coming out from uh, below there, um, wherever they live. They were um, off too. On, just to be clear. Time. Uh, they, yeah, they were all. Was yeah, they were all. Everybody was. They so were all 420 they're, they're to 450. They were all exactly off, so exactly so so they're all rejoicing. But one thing they're not rejoicing about is that the stock is not lower because I've heard them. Oh my mm -hmm. God, this is going to go down twenty percent down, whatever. No, it's not. No, it's not. So um, thank you, Tesla Q. Always a pleasure. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, so I don't I know what the stock's going to do, um, Herbert. To answer your question, I don't. I don't mm -hmm. know, but um, the, I don't know the energy number. Like, was that? I mean, they they haven't forecasted energy, so I don't know if the four. Gigawatt hours is a big beat. I don't know how that's yeah. being couched. And then the other thing that Tesla did, this is very important. In the P&D statement, they called out supply issues. They did not call out demand issues. Demand issues. So if they called out demand yeah. issues and, mm -hmm. and macro issues in, impacting mm -hmm. demand, I think the number would be much lower because I think what people would do is they would cut and paste this quarter and this production and do some more extrapolation throughout the year. But the fact that they're calling out one-time issues with Berlin, with the Model 3 cutover, they're they're calling out supply. That was a definitive statement from them. Really, Jeff? Okay, so I want to I want to dive in a little closer to that. Please mm. tell me. The because, other thing um, I want to call out they, before I need to leave, please, Herbert. Yes, go ahead. Yep. Go ahead. Sorry, I just wanted to add one, one thing. I mean, Troy is, Troy is one chapter in my book, but the other chapter is all these Wall Street analysts. Remember how a week ago they were still at 460 and had problems finally coming down a little bit? I mean, let's all say as well how ridiculous these people were, because how did they ever come up with a 460? And then for a, a quarter, they're not adjusting until the very last moment where they suddenly put it down. So, I mean, there are lots of people who have to do a little bit of soul searching here including ourselves, but yeah, we don't count. We're not somebody who does this, but uh, so thank you so much, Alexander. Oh, sure. I know you got a drop. So uh, Thanks, Jeff, Alexander. maybe I can ask, I can ask you this question, Dan. So we've got um, 386,000 deliveries from a production of 433. Your positioning was, and, and same with Tesla. They said that it was a uh, Model 3 ramp cutover and it was the Berlin arson that happened. You only gave a 10 to 20,000 from China Micro. I know you said that this is up for debate, but the reason why I bring that up is because BYD had a disaster quarter. So people are saying terrible things about Tesla and you're going, Tesla, it's over. BYD, who beat Tesla in Q4, has sold only 300,000. So that's, uh, you know, Tesla sold 387, right? So, uh, yeah, what yeah. Else? Tesla sold uh, 387. Yeah, they sold 300,000 on yeah. Q1. So yeah. now Tesla is yet again the largest electric vehicle maker in the world. Uh, Tesla BYD fell 42% from the fourth quarter last year. That's a significant drop. So the question to you was, you know, and I know we just did a show. Uh, we have a separate show that we just published this morning, and we talked about this. But BYD's quarter fall does that not show that there's a we more weakening in demand in China than than um, than than what Tesla's saying and what you're saying? Yeah, it it it, it potentially it potentially does, but they're up thirteen percent year on year. So they're Q one twenty three to Q 
their Q1 2023 versus 2024, they're up 13 percent. So they're growing. They're not growing at the rate that they were. And of course, and then the, yes, they did sequentially de decline from Q4. Um, so something's going on. The thing we don't know with BYD is, is we don't know their inventory position. And with Tesla, we know that they left Q4 with industry leading 15 days of, of, of inventory. They may add some inventory, but they're no, in Q1, but they're nowhere near uh, being anywhere close to even the next best, um, you know, person in inventory. Tesla's just in a completely different. And by the way, they're direct to consumer. They don't they don't have inventory, you know, dispositioned at dealer lots like BYD does. So the thing would be interesting with BYD is was the canary in the coal mine inventory? Was there an inventory data point in Q4 that could have shown that hey, these guys are just like they built, they did this record quarter, got this headline you know, for, you know, the, the highest production, you know, higher production than any other EV maker. And then they just throw out a bunch of inventory. Cause yeah, I, I was expecting a Q4 to Q1 to decline from BYD, but not, not 43%. I think Tesla's down, you know, 20 some percent. So anyway, it's something to look at, but there, it, it says that there's definitely something going on from a macro perspective, but at, Again, the inventory thing would be key for BYD because Tesla didn't had their lowest inventory position in many quarters uh, leaving Q4, and I, don't, I just don't know where BYD was. That would have been the to me the canary in the coal mine. Um, so yeah, but I want to be clear tier two. Like, there's execution issues here that need to be unwrapped. Like, it's it's not okay to like, you know, if they did miss forty thousand or so Model Three. Like that's not okay. Like Tesla needs to figure that out. Um, it, you know, but but these things that are out, outside of their control, like boats being shot at and they have to reroute in the Red Sea, or uh, their their factory being you know their power source for their factory being torched. Those things, uh, yeah. I mean, I would do the supply offsets, figure out what it did to inventory, figure out what it did to shipments, and then quantify it. So again, in Tesla's P and D report, they're not calling out demand. And and and, and if you look at their behavior, yeah. and if you look at their behavior on pricing, Herbert, they took all their mm -hmm. they took ch prices up in China, they took prices up in the U.S. on April first as promised. So these are not the behaviors of a company that says that they have a systemic demand issue. But can you explain this then? Why is production so much higher than deliveries? If they did, if yeah. they had that much production, why not try to sell all of it, cut prices, sell as much? Is that what ha what happened? How did that fall? Well, they don't, they don't, I mean, they've obviously decided to not, to not play that game. Like what, like they could, maybe they could have got the 386 to 400 K, but they've clearly decided to not do that. And you're saying like, why is there a big difference when you have mm -hmm. these supply disruptions? Let's call out the arson issue where it occurred mm -hmm. in the quarter. It occurred in week eight or nine in the quarter. By the time you restart production and you get everything going, you're not going to be able to ship all those units out and, and gotcha. recognize revenue on them. So you're going to be stranded trying to re-ramp your factory, but you gotcha. know you've got customers on the other side of the next quarter, so you keep going. Same thing with a new product. With a new product, you don't slow down the inventory or you don't slow down the rate of production until you get the peak run rate. That's how ramps go. And I, I, I don't believe that they've hit peak run rate yet on the Model 3. So therefore, they're just going to be building and whatever they could ship, I'm sure that they may have figured this out very late in the quarter, if at all. I think some of the the VIN data that Troy called out said it was started improving later in the quarter, but I don't think we don't know if they're we don't know if they're at peak run rate for the model three yet. So we don't even know mm -hmm. if they've even solved this problem. But when you have a an unsolved problem, or if you solve it later in the stage in the quarter, you are invariably going to add inventory because you're going to have the wrong, you're gonna, it's going to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, or you won't be able to make the cutoff for the end of March. Okay. So most of the miss is on the Model 3, Model Y, of course, because this is so tiny here, the other models. But the Model 3, Model Y, do you think, any guesses? You think it's the Model 3, right? It's almost all the Model 3, or do you, how, what percent do you think will be the Model Y? Well, I think for, I mean, I think there's a, a, a cutover issue on the Model 3. That's a right. new product cutover issue. And then you've got in Berlin, you've got, and you've got the Red Sea, both inbound supply and outbound Affected. supply 
issues okay. that, that that would have affected the why. And again, that's why people are like, oh, I saw the inventory trackers and look like they're growing. Yeah, you're not going to have the product at the right place at the right time when you have these disruptions. And by the way, it's all relative. Tesla does not have an inventory problem. And in fact, I'm worried that they don't actually carry enough inventory. Very interesting. Okay, so now that I look back at how you explained this, um, initially I thought that uh, your China micro is still too low. Uh, That's fine. That's why I said all of it's up for debate. Yeah, I think this is still too low. I think you know, we got to give more to China macro because BYD fell 43% also. Having said that, BYD has a totally different segmentation. So if they are going through economic concerns, um, shouldn't Tesla be the one with a higher car, higher priced car, 50,000 US or higher versus the, the BYDs, which is $25,000 US uh, dollars? You know, who would be affected? All of them would be affected probably. But you know how it is in most economies, <laughs> it's the poor that are affected by recessions and deflation. Absolutely. <laughs> the rich, <laughs> the rich think, yeah, it's happening, but I've got cash. I've got money. I got whatever. Not an issue, you know? Oh, God. Okay. So what do you think is going to happen next? Uh, what's, your, what's your thinking about this second quarter Q2? Yeah. So it, it, again, so... Tesla should have righted the ship then on, on these production issues. Have they solved the Model 3 issue? I don't know if they've said that they've solved the Model 3 issue. Um, so, and, and again, a, a lot of things happened during the quarter that led me to believe that they were having supply issues because they kept raising, they raised prices multiple times on the new Model, on the new model 3. And, and it just led me to believe that they were, they were running into it. They were running into supply issues and then we saw the you know the times go so we have to look at the the lead times and see if those are improving or not that will be the to me the telltale sign that they've they figured this out and they've they've solved it um so so for q2 um i think last year i think they did 466 by the way i think q2 there was a big issue last year with q2 with the people that count cars i think the people that count cars in q2 last year were way low and and tesla ended up surprising i think that was one of the reasons the stock went on a little run uh you know into um into july um so for so for q2 last year they're at 466 so they'd have to figure out uh, a number of things uh, to get back to a number like that or higher i think this is part of the reason that they they with they withdrew guidance and they said that they would be growing at a lower rate but they said that they would be growing so again, I, this to me, this all goes back to, you know, where's this a supply, set of supply issues? And to me, then then the rest of this is like, well, what's what level were these supply issues? Like, what magnitude were these issues? Is there some bit of demand? I, I you'd have to think that there's something going on with where interest rates are, with what's going on in China, as we spoke about. There has to be some portions of this that are are, are related to demand. But I think Tesla and their P and D report, I think in terms of expectations and in terms of the prior year, compared to the prior year, they were calling out supply issues versus um, demand well, they issues. Said partially, so again, it's not, partially yeah, yeah. related to supply issues. You, you know, that's an important word. And now, so two million. So okay, you explained why the production number is much higher than delivery numbers. I still think they're going to hit two million at the end of this year. Do you? And the reason I say that is that production was not the issue. Uh, it was, of course, it was impacted. But the way you explained it was that because the, of the arson, because of the um, the, um, the Model 3 changeover, uh, they were able to make more at this last bit that they couldn't sell yet. So that could still affect them, but they're going to sell everything that they make. I still think they're going to cut prices to hit the $2 million. This is, um, by the way, a great table, a, a chart that James Stevenson put out. And it says, you know, this is trailing 12 months. So it's not telling you what 2024 is. It's telling you what happened in the last 12 months by quarter. And you can see that, you know, for people who thought, my God, you know, sales are going to fall. It fell Q1 by 8.5% compared to what it was last year. And so that's why people are concerned about it. But at the end of the day, we're still selling quite a bit of cars and it's still going up in an exponential curve here. So this is still the same story. Um, well, what, Herbert, what do you guys think, I think about... Yeah. 
Yeah, I think I think I think two million is going to be difficult. They would have to have you know potentially a you know 550 600 k type quarters, mm. and they're yeah. at three eighty seven here. So if you look at when you when you start low like this, it really becomes difficult to make it up unless there's an event okay. at some portion of the year. So if there were to be like 200 basis points of rate cuts that occur, by the way, if there's 200 basis points of rate cuts in the middle of the year, something broke in the economy, either jobs or uh, inflation went you know massively deflationary. We, I don't know if we even want that. But you'd have to have some significant event uh, either a new product introduction or a series of them, or, you know, is it FSD? Has it become absolutely amazing and game changing or some event like that to really drive significantly higher uh, demand? So I think what analysts are going to do over the next couple of weeks is they're going to look at this 387. They're going to look at the the issues that Tesla calls out. They're going to be anxiously awaiting for the earnings call. It's like what what additional commentary can Tesla actually start putting some relative magnitudes next to these issues of saying like, look, this would have been a, a 450 K quarter if it wasn't for the following things. Boom, boom, boom. They've actually, I, I remember Zach has actually done that um, mm -hmm. before in the past. Um, so I think analysts are going to be awaiting that. I think 2 million is going to be a little bit of a, of, of a stretch, but if they could grow maybe just under it, I mean, who knows? We'll, we'll have to see, but you, you may be looking at you know single digits to flat growth year on year, and the question is: is will the growth come from you know their software as a services offerings and in, in energy, and is the company fundamentally changing and transforming as they're between these two delivery waves or these two product waves, and then you've got to wait till you have a kind of a lower cost product offering and the Cybertruck to be fully ramped up in the Model 3. What about FSD? Do you guys think that FSD, if it continues to improve as it has, I had an incredible drive yesterday, 12.3.3, incredible. Like I drove across the city, I came all the way back, it did four things that shocked me that it did, and I'm like, I was just shocked how good this is now. If more and more people have that experience, and then they, they it continues to improve over this next six months, could in the final half of this year, could FSD, um, you know what I mean? Like e even if the numbers fall, FSD becomes a story uh, for the stock uh, or and perhaps FSD uptake starts going up as well. Like people start buying the car in anticipation of, you know, I'd rather buy a car that has potential for the future to be robo taxi ready versus a car that isn't. And it's much more real now than it was a year ago. What do you guys think? Yes, but the economic model would have to be uh, adjusted for it to ramp precipitously. Meaning, yeah, what's the barrier to entry? Yeah. Maybe you're saying two hundred dollars I mean, uh, is way too much. I, I've often said so. Tesla has has to get the product fully featured. It has to be stable and really good, and then they should measure what the take rate is. Like we have a good product. It has all the features we promised. How many people buy it at twelve thousand mm -hmm. dollars up front, or one ninety nine a month, and then quickly follow up with, okay, here's the per mile plan, or here's another approach to lower the barrier of entry. I think the two together will sell more cars. I think it'd be naive to think that there's a car in the market that's the number one selling car today in the world, and now it's reliably drives itself from point A to point B. I, I think you'd have to be naive, or you'd have to be <clears throat> emotionally bearish to think that that's not going to increase sales of the product. But Tesla has to address the economic total cost of ownership of that. Okay. Yeah. So are you there with us, uh, Xander? Are you still selling your calls? What are you doing there? Tell us what you did. Looks like he's cleaning up some mess. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I um, Can't hear I you. Your myself. volume is very low. Very low? Okay. Hold on a second. How's that? Can, can... A little bit better, not, not great. Oh, how about that? Can you hear me now? Yeah, talk that close. <laughs> okay. There. Um, so uh, I position myself very, very well. I, um, I s sold calls yesterday, even though I was a little worried. And, I, and like I mentioned earlier, I bought, I bought puts. So uh, I'm fine. Um, I'm, what, what I am is really, really surprised by how... Uh, the stock is holding up. Um, the entire move occurred pre-market, which 
you know, which was expected. Uh, but uh, it it almost looks like the shorts are waiting for the dip buyers to you know buy the dip here, and then uh, something else to consider is um, perhaps margin calls occurring um, later on if you've been like overextended. Uh, but um, it's not that drastic of a move for me to really uh, go down that 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 line of thinking. Um, so um, a question that was asked that I found value in, which is if like how can tesla blame um you know deliver how can they blame these uh, events and and jeff you did a great job explaining this um if if they were able to produce so many cars that 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 delta between um what are, what are your thoughts on on uh on that question can you can you back it up one more time yeah it, quite simply it's it's um and it's it's, it may be difficult to explain. I may not be doing the greatest job, but when you have a supply interruption intra quarter, so remember inside of a quarter is 90 days. There's 12 weeks, sometimes 13. There's 75 days. There's 75 production days where you could, a vehicle could exit the line and most likely with high confidence, make it to its final point of destination. By the way, Tesla would know that exact confidence number of if I produce something on the 75th day, what's the probability that it reaches its point of distribution. And then that increases as you go inward 74, 73 and so forth. Again, sometimes people have financing issues, whatever. So when you have a supply disruption intra quarter and your supply goes down, what happens is, is you, and then you solve the problem intra quarter and you start re ramping supply, you invariably have missed certain perishable points in time. For example, in the early parts of a quarter, they're trying to reach further points of distribution. And when you have supply disruptions at that portion of the quarter where well, you're reaching, you're, you're missing those uh, potentially. And so you have the wrong supply at the wrong time. It doesn't mean they won't sell it. They'll sell it eventually. It's just, it's, it's the wrong stuff at the wrong time. Same, so the model three, you have a new product starting up. It's a new product ramp. What you do with a new product ramp is you invariably build high inventory. You are building at a rate. You don't look at the inventory number on a new product. What you do is you look at what is your rate of production relative to your peak that you plan for a week. And until you reach your peak weekly production, you keep going and you build inventory no matter what. Now, what happened on the Model 3? We don't know if they've even recovered yet. We, some of the data we heard is that late in March, they started getting more and more VINs together. And so what happens there is not all those make it out. They, Tesla doesn't care. They're, they're, they're building Model 3 as fast as possible on March 30th, March 31st. They're, gonna, they're not going to try to just clamp down for inventory and try, to, and, and try to sell. They don't need to do that with Model 3 Refresh. They have, they have a wait list for it. So what happens when you have that intra-quarter supply disruption, remember it was announced the second week of January, okay? It doesn't even start deliveries, I think, till the fourth or fifth week. So you're, you're starting deliveries in the fourth or fifth week, and you only have about five or six weeks or so after that to, do, to, to produce vehicles. And if, you have, and if you're not at your full peak rate of supply, you, you will ship what you can build, but we don't know how far under that curve they are. So normally they do 50, Xander, they, they do like 55,000 Model 3s in the U.S. in the quarter. What do they do? We don't know the number. Do they do 5K, 10K, 20K? I don't know the number. Um, so, but they called it out as a, a disruption, and we know that there were very few deliveries in the quarter. So the reason you could have inventory, you can have more production than sales, is that when you restart from a problem intra-quarter, you have the wrong supply at the wrong place at the wrong time, and you may not be able to make that cutoff at the end of the quarter based on the location your customer wants to take delivery at. And that's fundamentally what happens. It works once the supply disruption is solved, it works its way out into the next quarter and they're fine. But you do take the hit. Again, you're dealing with a it's a it's a game. It's a 90 day game. It's 75 days of production. And you've got to utilize every day. Once you lose that capacity, or once or once you lose that ability to to be in distribute on a distribution lane, you lose that supply, and then it just sits. Then you, then you lose the supply, but you keep the inventory. Okay. 
Well, okay, that, that makes helpful. a lot of sense. Um, yeah, very, very helpful. <laughs> uh, I, so, so yeah, I mean, it essentially means you're, like Something you said, you, you don't have the right Let's vehicles in the right place. <laughs> um, so uh, the other thought I had was that uh, the, the, this kind of reaction on a down day, um, I was just looking, the, the markets are, um, like the NASDAQ is down 1.31%. Uh, and so the entire move happening um, pre-market, and now we're just, like, look, look at it, it's flat the entire morning. Um, that's odd to me. So I, I closed all of my puts that, that are almost all of them. Um, I, uh, and then, and then I'm, I bought the dip. I bought um, 69 shares at 164.69, uh, obviously. And uh, and then just saved a little bit uh, for uh, you know f for maybe 150 if we get there. But uh, as the news spreads, you got to remember the three day rule. Um, uh, you know it'll take it'll take some time before uh, everyone knows about this. Uh, but I, I think that with FSD the way it is, and and man, my Cybertruck is amazing. That 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 the driving dynamics are just phenomenal. Um, I I. I think every vehicle moving forward should have steer by wire and 48 volt uh, architecture. Like I do not want to go back. So I think that it's that good that, uh, you know, I'm kind of, if it goes lower, so be it. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to deploy everything that I was saving uh, right, right, you know, this week. Th this week, I think that uh, this feels to me like the, the moment where the worst uh, has uh, been priced in especially with with this reaction i'm uh, genuinely surprised that it's this flat yeah again none of this is investment advice from from any of us um Thank you. i think it's really i think it's really hard really hard to say um when i when i originally invested in tesla i had a similar situation of they couldn't this is 11 years ago they couldn't build you know the model s and in, in in significant production volumes and i remember even visiting the factory um, as a kind of a peer in the industry and um, in, tw in later in or, or in 2012 and they were, you know, it, it just it, very interesting to me. Like, and then I test drove the car. I'm like, there's no car like this on the market. It's amazing. And for me, I'm like, okay, there's a disconnect. There's a great product here. I, d I wasn't sure about the unit economics or like if they figured it out, but you'd have to kind of like think that they would figure it out in order to invest. But anyway, that was my original thesis as well. I think a similar thing could be happening, but quite frankly, Tesla is a 500 plus billion dollar company and for it to command, you know, this kind of forward multiple, there'd have to be some pretty tangible things from management that they call out in the earnings call. So I would, I'm, I'm a little bit more uh, careful and guarded here. Again, I'm, I'm a long investor, uh, but you know, I would say, you know, if you look at the multiple, the, the earnings revisions are going to start coming in here hot and heavy. Um, so we don't know. There could be a bunch of surprises here too. Um, there could be surprises with FSD recognition. There could be a number of things that Tesla does. The question will be is on the earnings call. Is it sustainable? If they're going to recognize more revenue on FSD, is that run rate sustainable? Is the energy run rate sustainable? Is are the are the issues that caused the shortfall in Q1 truly supply issues? Again, knowing that Tesla said like, "Hey, we're not going to have the high, as high a growth as we normally had," but you know, from a 420 to 450 number, were were the majority of the predominant issues supply related? Well, then then it, it depends on the story they tell in in the third week of April. I think that. That's what it ultimately comes down to. Until then, you're a bit in the dark. Um, are you shaken at, at all by uh, by this news? Does your thesis change? Well, I mean, again, if the, if the company is calling out supply disruptions um, from hitting like their own targets, then I'm not I'm not shaken. Am I concerned? Yeah, I would be concerned because the Model Three is under their control so we don't know what the exact supply issue is but that's you know that's your product you developed it you released the part numbers you did supply planning with your suppliers why can't you produce enough of them what's the issue that's execution and and, and 
maybe there's a natural disaster. Maybe something happened with a particular supplier. We don't know. Um, but I think they would have called that out. Um, so uh, it, it, we can call out the causes and they're supply related. It doesn't abscond. It doesn't excuse Tesla uh, as being part of the root causes of that. But like I said, a Red Sea conflict, you can't, you know, you can't put that on them. It's, it's quite frankly, it's how quickly they recover. And we know Tesla's supply chain is very good, very nimble. They hold very little inventory too. And we know they're pretty nimble at recovery. So if anybody was faced with these similar conflicts, I would put my money on Tesla's supply chain in terms of their ability to recover. So am I shaken? If it's supply related, no. If it's broader than that, then there, yeah, then there could be some cause for concern. Even the demand, though, let, let me kind of walk you through my thinking right now. So um, am I shaken, right? Is the is the uh, EV growth story busted? Right? Some people the, who's, who say it's busted, it's over. You know, and uh, yeah, I'd like to show this graph. This is what's happened since 2013 to 2024. And this includes the Q1 of 2024. Now, this is trailing 12 months. So if you look at in the last year, from that perspective, this is not a busted growth story, Okay. And uh, let's 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 go through this. So, is the transition to electric vehicles is there is that is that over? Is it done? Well, guess what? We just reported. Uh, we will be reporting today that 32 countries now have five percent of all their car sales are now EVs. 32 countries. Once you hit that five percent number for any kind of disruptive technology, that's when it just skyrockets even faster after that. The U.S. is much lower than all the other countries, many of the most of the major um, economic countries out there. And so it's for people who live in the U.S., we think that EVs are nothing because it's at, at less than, you know, um, it's like less than 8 percent, 9 percent of all sales here. It's still not this high as Europe and, and China. So do you think that the electric vehicle story is over? Do you think that it's muted? Um, it's still going to grow and it's going to take over. So for me, that's the case. Then I look at Tesla. Is Tesla selling cars that people don't want compared to other choices for electric vehicles? And the answer is, of course, no. Tesla's cars are the best in the world. They continue to sell better than anything else. And don't compare Tesla to BYD because BYD sells in completely different segments than Tesla. They just barely cross over each other. You don't say that if BYD succeeds, that Tesla will fail and vice versa. Um, so then... Then, you know, this Tesla's car is the best. Cybertruck is, is amazing reviews. Model 3 Highland is amazing reviews. Model Y is still the number one best-selling car in the world. And then you go and, and say, okay, why did you invest in Tesla? Is it because of the auto industry? You invested in Tesla auto industry five to 10 years ago. If you invest in Tesla three years ago because of the auto industry, then that's not, that wasn't the reason I did it. I did it because this is a company that's an innovation company that continue to do, produce new segments and new markets. They're now in energy. They're now in uh, robots. They're now in dojo and AI, right? And they're now in uh, robo-taxi. So then you look at these for progress. Every single one of those I just mentioned are making massive progress, right? Energy is going to double they're, they're already at 9% of revenue and their margins is already higher than the auto last year. This year, they're going to double that. And then it's going to be eventually in three to five years, the calculations said it's going to be equal to the auto market and then eventually it's going to be higher than the auto market. So if you hold on three, five or even longer years, we'll be laughing at, we're only looking at just an, uh, auto at this point and we were worried about a 30, 40,000 car miss today. And then you look at the bot and you look at FSD. And so the bets that we've made is coming true. So the bet we were making was that Tesla's will solve FSD. And at this point with 12.3.3, many people are being converted. They're realizing that this is now a path to FSD versus maybe six months ago, a year ago, people thought this was a dream. It wasn't going to get there. And then you look at the bot. This thing has just completely changed the world. It's completely, it's going to just dwarf all these numbers we're talking about. It is $44 trillion labor market uh, per year. <laughs> and, they, and they're already going to start mass producing it by second of half next year and the year after that. So, okay, is there a massive, is this a, is this a dramatic hit? Uh, certainly, we don't want to see a, a big fall like this. It is a big fall from Q1. But again, I remind people what happened to even BYD, uh, BYD. they fell even more. So it's not um, it's not like this thing wasn't just something that was Tesla only related. 
this is why I believe that this is a lot more uh, China economy related than it is uh, than it is uh, the others, as I imagine. I think that the China numbers need to be it's it's the thing that we need to think about. It's it's got the biggest hit. So likely, I think that the the demand the the sales will go down for the rest of the year. It will still. I I know. I know it's too early. We need to wait till Q one earnings call to really find out what you were saying. What did they say about supply versus demand issues? But I'm going to count this as a China demand issue. But I mean, that's still not good. I mean, this is the thing. If 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 China has a prolonged, well, first off, it looks like the March PMIs look better in China. But if China has a prolonged issue, that's a that's a problem for Tesla. Remember though. You, you get hit on production and you get hit a little bit on demand in the first quarter in China, just seasonally due to China, China New Year. But I think all that's, that's kind of factored in. Um, I just don't, I mean, just beefing that number up in China, just saying, oh, it's China macro. You'd have to put that on a number and then say it's going to recover by the second half of the year because she's doing the following, they're doing this or that. So um, anyway, uh, supply supply issues, again, the big auto companies use supply issues for two years. And it, it really honestly was mostly an inability to execute. You know, it but these, you know, you know, your 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 power source for your factory being set on fire and people firing at ships in the Red Sea are not under con the control or purview of Tesla. Yeah. Um, so you know, chalk those up, put a number next to those, fine. The Model 3 changeover, it happened to me, it looks like. A mess up. It looks like an execution problem. So I, I'm well. I'm not crediting. To, let's say it's okay. Like that this happened, but it's something that you can actually attribute the shortfall to, and it's a more of a one-time thing versus um, a stagnant thing. And again, following back to the Xander's point, like the 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 latest two products that they've introduced, again along with the Model Y. I mean, people love these cars. They love the new Model Three. They love the Cybertruck. And these things are nowhere near their peak run rates yet. So I, it looks like people will take as many of these as Tesla can build. It's a good problem to have. I don't know another automaker that has a particular model where people will take as many as they can build. I don't know if that exists anywhere else in the auto industry. Uh, so I think that's a very important thing. But we have to step back and we have to understand, like, was there a demand reset or not and how much for the year? And then you have to net out the supply issues and then you know where you're really at for the year. Um, so I wouldn't be, if it's just, if you just look at the supply issues alone, they should have been easily over 400,000 units in the quarter. And I don't think people would be, have their hair on fire. So I think that's the way you have to look at the situation. Uh, and then you got to wait for management to guide in a couple of weeks. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for jumping on the live stream. Appreciate everybody. Um, this was numbers that came out: three hundred eighty-seven thousand deliveries from a four hundred thirty-three production. It's an eight point five percent reduction from uh, last year, year-over-year Q one. And so the you know the question is: is supply versus demand issues? We'll wait and see. The uh, they announced that uh, Tuesday, April twenty-third, is when they're going to do the earnings call. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. Thanks, Robert. Thanks.